All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how I animate a walk cycle. There's so many different kinds of walk cycles, um, depending on your character design and if it's, say, an animal with four legs or what have you. But here's a two-legged walk cycle. I'm using the mud bubble boy that uh, he is commonly referred to. Um, so this one is kind of a good mix between a simple walk cycle and but with, with a couple of complexities involved. Um, let me double-click the symbol here and kind of show you what I'm talking about. This is obviously the finished version, but I'm going to take you kind of step by step through um, uh, the, the process, but also show you um, one of my biggest uh, sort of shortcuts for creating a walk cycle. So you can also, uh, the one thing I want to point out that I'll get to in a minute um, as to how I did it um, is take note of the actual sneaker, the shape. There's uh, a few different shapes. There's this shape here, and you can see it one point becomes more of a rounded shape at the bottom. And then there's another shape here. So if I go to view, turn on rulers, and draw a little horizontal guideline here. The one thing I try to avoid, um, or what I did try to avoid for this walk cycle, is having the foot break this plane, uh, which can easily happen when you're tweening and rotating the same symbol and the foot comes down and breaks the plane like this. So this is the reason why I created um, a few additional uh, foot shapes um, or sneaker drawings, whatever you want to call them, uh, so that that foot would never break the plane. But also this um, this image here of the of the sneaker like this kind of uh, provides a feeling of weight for the character as well, and just a little bit more realism. Um, all right. So that said, let me save this out as a working file here. And what I want to do is, for now, we're going to actually delete the back leg. All right, so we just have the front leg. Um, and while we're at this point, I'm going to clear all these frames. So I basically have um, just the rest of the animation, but I would really want to just concentrate on the leg. Now this animation was created obviously where the character's walking in place because later on, um, you know, he's nested inside a graphic symbol, as you can see here. Here's scene one and here's our graphic symbol and I double click it, I'm inside this graphic symbol. So he's walking in place in a cycle that consists of about uh, 28 frames and uh, at this point I can go back on the main timeline and tween this across the stage to make him walk. Um, that's one way of doing it. Another way um, is to literally just make the character walk across the stage uh, just by moving him uh, from point A to point B within the animation itself. Um, but for this, uh, this is the way I like to work most of the time because it's just quick and simple. Um, and so let's just proceed uh, with this example. So what, I'm, what I usually do is I have this, this particular leg is broken up into three symbols. I'm gonna convert everything else um, beyond the leg to just outlines, just so we can concentrate on the leg itself. Okay, so we have this symbol here, which is the, just the sort of thigh symbol, and then the lower leg symbol, and then the foot symbol. Um, I've turned on, or I should say, I selected my free transform tool, and I've edited the center point so that these objects hinge appropriately. I want this foot to hinge down here at the bottom. I could have it hinge up here uh, at the ankle too. It doesn't matter. It's based on preference. Uh, so for this, I didn't use tweens. I just keyframed it on every other frame. As you can see by hitting um, command J uh, to access my document settings, I'm working at 30 frames per second. Um, so essentially by animating on every other frame or what's referred to as animating on twos, um, the frame rate of this animation is essentially 15 frames per second, which is fine. It works out well. Uh, so what I'm going to do is bring this, after creating those additional keyframes, start selecting multiple symbols and sometimes individual symbols and rotating them. Let's bring this up a little bit. I, again, I don't want to break this plane if I don't have to. And go down the line, create another keyframe. Now here is where I'm going to go to properties with the foot uh, or the sneaker selected. Go to swap. 
Yep, yeah, I don't want this other sneaker here. And rotate it again using the free transform tool. Use the arrow keys to nudge it in place. And then it's just a, a matter of manipulating these symbols to make it make it work. And then playing back the animation by scrubbing the timeline. And just checking your work. Hitting F6. Right? And then just continuing on. Properties, swap. And rotate that even more. Sometimes skewing helps as well. Again, with the free transform tool. And using the arrow keys to nudge everything. All right, so now the, that feels pretty good. Actually, I might want to go and, since the foot is coming up a little bit in that second frame, I'm going to swap it out. For that one, raise it up a little bit. Perfect. There. And now the leg's going to come forward. So it's also going to come up for a second, too. That foot's going to come up off the ground completely. So I want to swap it out for this symbol. Raise it up like that. So maybe, the, maybe this leg will not start to move forward at this frame, but it's about to. Okay. Now let's move it forward. And when you, what you know, the best thing to do if, if you're animating a walk cycle is to get up and walk around the room yourself and study your own movements and the way that you, the legs work and, and then the arms work and then how the arms work in relation to the legs and stuff like that. So um, when the leg starts to move forward, at this point, it's actually led by the upper thigh or even the knee. That's kind of how you want to feel it. So I'm going to select everything and start to move it forward like this. And maybe even have the foot rotating away even still just a little bit. And really have it kick forward at this point. Oops. I just want to edit the center point. I have all these symbols, the three symbols that comprise the entire leg, all selected at the same time, and I can edit the center point of them collectively. So I'm going to start to rotate that back up again, but we definitely want, don't want the foot to break that plane down here. And now, you can have the leg start to rotate forward. Felt like that. And let's check our work. And it's really going to kick out pretty quickly. And I'm, I'm kind of rushing through this a little bit just for the sake of time. And we're about to make that step forward back down to the ground or the surface that he's walking on. Almost there. Maybe one slight um, rotation of the foot here and now let's plant the foot or almost plant the foot I think it should be pretty quick now remember we want to get this foot back to the one frame before this frame before the very first frame when we get to we have one two about three uh, uh, more keyframes to work with so let's start to bring this leg down just a little bit let's select everything you can hold down shift as well and click symbols to select them. 
and now that foot's starting to come down. And now this will be the frame where the foot is planted. So let's grab, let's swap it out for sneaker number four. And place it right down on the ground. Perfect. And again, more keyframes. Start to slide that foot back and rotate the leg. Maybe, maybe that knee's going to bend a little bit. Just a little bit. So now this frame, the final one, should be somewhere between the previous frame and the first frame. And it looks like that's going to work out just fine. So let's move this back just a little bit. And let's just play that. So that worked out as quickly as I did it. Um, I've got the overall motion of this leg. I'm happy with it. It works out fine for me. So um, the one big, let's say, um, shortcut time saver, uh, since you know the character has two legs and we've just animated one, we know we don't want to have to try to reinvent the wheel here. We've already animated the leg. Um, so let's just take advantage of this. Select the entire leg um, animation that we just created select all the layers and all the keyframes, right, as I just did, right-click over them and say copy frames. Now let's lock that, lock all of them. Let's, con let's convert the, the layers to outlines. And I'm going to create a layer, a new layer, below that leg. We're going to create the leg, the second leg behind it. Um, so let's select this entire new, uh, in the new layer, select all these frames, right-click over them, and then in the context menu that pops up, click on paste frames. So now we've just pasted the same leg over again, okay? Now what we wanna do is stagger it so that they're working uh, in opposite uh, movement, okay? So we're gonna click and drag and copy this very first half of the animation. And I'm gonna click and drag it and place it at the end. And now let's get rid of I'm going to go to remove frames and get rid of those blank frames. So now what we've done is essentially staggered the walk itself. So you can see how that was so easy to work with right there to, to create that second leg. Um, so now I want to just make sure we're almost there. We want to align that second leg a little bit, right? You could leave it as is, but the feet are, are very close together. We want to create a little sense of space between the feet and the legs. Um, so what I'm going to do is turn on edit multiple frames. All my other layers are locked except for the second leg that we just pasted. Expand out these brackets. I'm going to click on the stage to kind of focus it and then do a command A to, to select everything. Uh, I'm going to pull everything back a little bit. I might even scale everything down just a hair. And then using the arrow keys, bump it up a little bit. Now, while we're while we're still in edit from um, multiple frame mode, I'm going to select by clicking on all these symbols here. Go to properties, go to color effect, and then select. We can select brightness. Drop the brightness down just a little bit. So you can see it just applies a a, a slight darkness to all those frames and all those symbols. And now we can turn off edit multiple frames. And what that darkness does is it just kind of pushes that leg back a little bit into the background, just a little bit. And so that's how I create normally a, a, a typical walk cycle using symbols and keyframes. Um, you could elect to tween, to motion tween this 
Um, it's totally up to you. The rest of the animation was done the same way by just rocking the arms back and forth and the head um, just to keep everything moving. Now back on, on the main stage, let me pan and zoom out a little bit and I'm going to hide my rulers since I don't need them. If I want to have this character walk across the stage, all I have to do is position him in the first keyframe off the stage and let's create a keyframe at the very last frame. I'm going to hold down the shift key and drag him across, which will constrain him along that axis. And then anywhere in between those two keyframes, I'm going to right click over the frames and just say create classic tween. And now we can play back our animation. So now at this point, we've created a walk cycle, we've animated the character walking across the screen. Um, the one problem to be that you know worth noting here is you can see that he's animated on every other frame. On the main timeline with the motion tween, the motion tween is animated on every single frame, which means that there's always a couple of frames where you can see his feet sliding. The only way to combat this, well, not the only way, there's a couple of ways to, to, to avoid this happening, is to animate the character literally taking a step and then another step and then another step and have it literally walking across as opposed to walking in place. Um, but if you didn't want to do that, if you like this method, you could also just animate on every single frame so that there's always movement on every single frame. There's not two frames where no, uh, the character's not moving at all. But for something like this, it's good enough. And if we wanted to, we could slow down, uh, or I should say, well, we could slow down uh, the rate at which he's moving across the screen by inserting more frames. So I'm going to click in here, just select a, a range of frames and hit F5, which is the insert frame command. And by doing so, he's going to slow down a little bit and the sliding won't be as noticeable. And there you have it. That's my walk cycle.